Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome back to a professional match of StarCraft 2. Now what I've got for you today is a Zerg versus Zerg where we find ourselves on the map Simulacrum. Spawning here in the bottom right hand corner of the map, playing with the red Zerg pieces from Finland, we have the number one StarCraft 2 player in the world and his nickname is Serro. Or as he says himself, Serro. Serro, he rolls the art. <laughs> His opponent in the opposite corner with the blue Zerg pieces from South Korea. On a legal act, he's the current number nine in the world. Certainly one of the very best. He goes by the name of Solar. Alrighty, so this match was played a couple of days ago during Stay at Home Story Cup, which was an online tournament. Now, for those of you that watched the tournament live on Twitch, you may realize that I actually casted this game together with Rotterdam live while the game was being played. The thing is, this game, it's a little bit crazy. I think a lot of you are really gonna get a kick out of it. So I figured, you know what? Who cares, right? Let's just go ahead and go over it once again because it is a really, really sick one and it shows you what is possible in this matchup. The music actually lined up perfectly right there with the end of the sentence. Anyways, that was not planned. <laughs> um, one thing I wanted to bring up, I just looked at the Wikipedia pages of both of these players, right? And one of the things we always emphasize as casters, I suppose, in the StarCraft community, is how young players like, for example, Clem, like, for example, Rain, or like, for example, Goblin are, right? They're like the big up-and-comers in StarCraft 2. I think they're all 17 and 18 years old right now, but especially like a year or two ago, obviously, they were significantly younger. The thing is... It makes it sound like these two players, who have been household names in SC2 for a very long time, like they are old, right? Okay, so just to put it in perspective, Solar has won his very first Premier Tournament back in 2014. I feel like I've been seeing Solar games for like the last 10 years, okay? Like he's been around for a very long time. However, currently, as of me making the video, he is 23 years old, right? Likewise for Serral, I mean, this guy has been on the top of the game since about 2018, which is when he won his very first Premier Tournament. For those of you curious, by the way, he has earned $822,000 in tournament earnings over the last, well, like two and a half-ish years, something like that. Uh, this guy has won the vast majority of his victories, uh, or the vast majority of the tournaments, rather, and his earnings over the last two and a half years. Uh, but he is currently only 22 years old. Isn't that funny? Like, we always emphasize, you know, younger guys, I suppose, but that does not all of a sudden turn these guys into, like, boomers or something along those lines. Anyways, very standard opener here from both players. You can see the uh, the third hatchery being planted down at the 30 supply mark. On some maps, it turns out to be 31. Most of them, though, right now, 30 is the standard. Very normal follow-up here, actually, though, from both players. Solo actually uh, being a little bit greedy here, decided to skip out the first two Zerklings. It's this nice little mind game that we see quite a bit in SC2. If you uh, delay your own Zerklings, obviously, you can get one drone a little bit quicker, and therefore you get just a tad of additional resources. Shouldn't really make much of a difference, though. It's mostly just a skill check, yeah? Right? Like, most of the time, uh, we see, like, the big influx of Zerklings right about right now. Sarah actually only making eight here. And Solar is just adding on two for now. Okay. Well, he's adding on a couple more right now as well. But usually with, like, the first injects popping off, that's when we see players finally adding on a sufficient amount of Zerklings to really start piling on the pressure. Evo Chambers, though, already coming up as well, right as those Baneling Nests finished. And honestly, with the amount of Zerklings that are being produced here, I think this is mostly just going to be a skill check where both players are like, okay, I'm going to test the waters, see what can be done here, see if you're maybe playing a little bit too greedy, see if I can maybe out-micro you, but I don't think they're really expecting to get all too, too much done. Zerklings get in. One of the key characteristics right here of a top-level player. You saw the same actually for Solar as well, but one of the key characteristics is scouting constantly. Very important to get that Zerkling in, just to see if maybe something is odd, if the Evo Chamber went up before the Bailing Nest, for example. That is a potential build that we used to see a little bit, and you might be dealing with like a, uh, a quick plus one melee for those Zerklings, and then you'll have to play a lot more defensively, so those little scouts, pretty important. But, I mean, I can cast most of this early game here just from the production tab. It's basically dead even until just now. Okay, yeah. I think Solar started it and then cancelled it. I'm not entirely sure why. I'm not entirely sure why. Anyway, um, on the side of Solar, we see plus one melee coming up, whereas on the side of Serro, we see him going for plus one missile. This is very difficult to scout, though. Most of the time, the plus one melee indicates that it is going to be a Mutalisk opener. Obviously, you could also go for, like, a, a Roach, Ravager, Ling, Bane kind of push, because obviously your Zerklings benefit from those upgrades, and so do the Banelings. Um, but this is very, very difficult to scout right now for Serro. 
The best intel he's gonna get is the timing of the gases at the third, but that's not also that reliable. He sees the Roach Warren at this point too. Probably does not make the assumption that it is going to be that, uh, that Muta style, and there we do see that Spire. You don't really go missile upgrade or melee upgrades and then into missile. Usually it's uh, it's one or the other. Anyways, so the Spire is coming up. Overlord speed will be done here as well in just a little bit for Serral. Probably will be planning on going for an Overseer here as soon as that lair finishes, which it just did. Um, Is he actually going to make an Overseer? Oh yeah, there it is. There's the speedy boy. It actually fly. Uh, it's actually flying in from the other side of the map. So this one should be able to figure out exactly what's going on. And this is something that Serral does every single Zerg versus Zerg. Well, there we have it. Spire gets spotted. So what's the response of Serral going to be? He's got a second Evo Chamber coming up over here. He's trying to get the fourth base. Now, ooh, Solar desperately trying to see if he can maybe get the Council on it. Getting the Council here is huge. Okay, he will force the Council. What, a diff uh, what are the difficult parts when you're playing Roach, Ravager, Hydra, right? Because most of the time, that's going to be the response. Hydra then this time around as well for Cero. Um, the fourth base is what's very, very difficult to get up and running. Muras, they're not really going to be able to be that great in a direct engagement, but they can buy you a lot of time to get your own economy up. So fourth hatchery here, undisturbed for Solar. He's going to go for Muras here. If he can force that fourth base to go down, he's going to be in a phenomenal spot. Once again, a couple of Zerklings over here. Zerklings actually now also streaming past that one Roach that was barely not in a correct spot, pretending to be a Zealot, I suppose. That happens to Zealots all the time. Zerklings though managed to get into the main base. They're actually target firing down the Spore Crawler. I love it. That does mean that those 12 Mutas that are coming up right now can deal an awful lot of damage. Keep in mind these are plus one uh, melee links as well, so they deal a little bit more damage than the conventional Zerklings do, and this is already a bunch of damage done. Fourth base though still holds, and Serral does actually now have a pretty decent setup, but he needs to have that fourth hatchery done. Love this creep tumor over here, that creep tumor actually huge, now allows that spore crawler to go down towards the low ground and forces these, uh, these mutas to go around. Spores on the main base finishing as well, Lurker then is coming up. So pretty quick Lurker Den here, all things considered. Hydras are being created as well, but obviously Solar right now is going to start piling on the pressure. He knows that that fourth base is being defended. That means that most of the time the third is going to be a little bit more vulnerable. Now Serral doing an excellent job splitting off his units, making sure that he's got a decent amount of defenses in every single location. A lot of spores, by the way, are being built. Like, he's going for tons of spore crawlers. In the meantime, though, while this is all going on, right, 11 drones go down. And if you look at that worker count... Right? It's 73 uh, versus 55. So at this point, Solar is heavily ahead. He's got himself those gases mining at the fourth base too, and that means he can continuously harvest here. Now this scout over here actually for Serral is really nice. He's got one little change thing over there. He sees the gases being taken immediately, which indicates, at least to me, that this is likely going to be a long-time commitment to Mutalisk. So Serral can go all out with the Spore Crawler production right now, as well as, these, uh, as, well as those Hydras. The thing is, though, if you go too heavily into Hydralisk, the Banelinks can just deal so much damage. Banelinks, they deal a lot of damage to uh, to Hydras uh, because they're light units and, um, well, they don't have a lot of hit points in general. Serodo does have the fourth base up and that's really what you need if you want to try and defend against this because you're not really going to be able to achieve too, too much if you're only harvesting off of three bases here instead. All right. Here's the next transition, apparently, from Serral, probably fearing those potential for Banelinks. Centrifugal Hooks is going to finish here in a little bit as well. That's the Roly Poly upgrade for these Banes. Um, Lurkers are phenomenal against Banelinks, of course. Mutas instead of that main base, trying to get a little bit of damage done. Banelinks in the meantime, though, roll in over at the third base. That Evo Chamber block was brilliant. Roaches sacrificed their lives, but not too much damage actually gets done there by Solar. He does lose a lot of resources, but obviously he's also gathering a ton more. Yeah, so here's Centrifugal Hooks done. That deals a lot of damage, right? It just speeds them up a lot. Huh? Lurker split at this point, though, is pretty sweet. There's also a couple of Spore Crawlers set up. Serral is holding on here, right? He's holding on to the bases that he's got. Banelink's not entirely sure where they need to go. Obviously, Solar doesn't really need to be frugal with the amount of resources that he gets just because he's getting way more income. He's already got the fifth base secured right now, too. But if Serral can max out on Hydras and Lurkers and maybe add on a couple of Vipers as well, I think that is the ultimate unit composition. And once again, Banelings rolling into the third base. Lurkers shooting their spines, but this time around 13 drones. 13 drones is a ton, okay? That's a lot of workers. Serral doesn't really have the money to replenish those workers very easily. Huh? 
Very aggressive move there, though, by Solar. Not really getting a whole lot done with those Mutalisk. Hive is coming up. Okay, so the ultimate unit composition for Zerk versus Zerk is Hydra Lurker Viper. Hydra Lurker Viper is amazing. Um, one of the... Oh, actually, finally, we have a bit of a counterattack right here as well for Serral. Sends out a couple of roaches. He doesn't need those anymore. Just wants to go Hydras and Lurkers at this point. Um, Hydra Lurker Viper deals with everything. You can abduct... Uh, Brute Lords, you can obviously Blinding Cloud your opponent's Lurkers as well. You can uh, Parasitic Bomb a Mutalisk. It's really the go-to unit composition. Now, once again, yeah, this run-by over here does not get much done. Hive is already done here as well for Solar, though. He's now going for the Ultralisk Cavern and then also the Spire. As far as Ultras go, obviously Lurkers, phenomenal against those. The problem here for Serral is that he doesn't have that much income, right? And he's gonna have to deal with continued aggression as well. Banelings rolling forward once again to the third base. Hydras trying to ward away here as much as they possibly can. Zerklings, though, oh my god! They just go straight down that minced Zerkling grinder, apparently. The Lurkers over there are having an absolute field day and getting some of the most efficient trades ever. 16 and 14 kills here between the two of them. Still though, Solar's strategy at this point is just simply keeping this Zerk player in red contained. If he can keep so or if he can keep Serral on just four bases, and he's mining off of five or maybe six, he doesn't need to take efficient trades because, well, I mean, obviously he's just gonna have a lot more income, right? As long as he trades half decently. And he can obviously justify those costs. I mean, look at the work account right now as well. 88 drones here for uh, for Solar versus only uh, versus only 71 here from Serral. I mean, he's getting way more income. As long as he can trade efficiently, eventually Serral's gonna mine out, right? Now look at the money lost at this point, though. Very, very significantly in favor here of the Finnish Zerg. Bottom left and base, though, is taken. And this is something that Serral really can't do. Serral, like, where's he gonna expand, right? He's gonna try and take this one. Very difficult to do because then you just spread yourself so thin. Actually, while that was all going on, I think a bunch of Zerklings and maybe a couple of Banelings have rolled into this hatchery over here, too. So the third hatchery did fall. Oh, the, that one, that one's pretty easily reacquired. But you can't really, like, expand over here either. Definitely can't expand over here. Saro is limited to the amount of bases that he's got right now. Alright, so there's the Brute Lords. Now, like I said, Hydra Lurker Viper is the go-to option. The Vipers are out. There's four of them here in total. You can abduct Brute Lords. This is a thing that they changed once upon a time, which made it the most important upgrade. The most important unit. Ooh, once again, the Bailings trying desperately to connect with the Hydralisk. Vipers right now. There we go. They can abduct those Brutes. They get a lot of damage in. Bailings, though, immediately roll forward. Serral forced to back off, leaving one of those Brute Lords alone, although I think it still got picked off right there by the Spork Faller. Once again, gets a good abduct in. Zerkings in the meantime, though, going to town here over at the fourth base. A lot of damage is being done. One Parasitic Bomb, by the way, can deal 120 damage. The Mutas have 120 life. So Parasitic Bomb on Mutalisks, also an amazing option. But Serral has to be exceptionally careful. An additional 17 drones go down and Solar is piling on the pressure. Ultralisk right now coming up as well. Chitinous Plating is also going to be the change-up that Solar will be going for. Once again, though, Brute Lords, they managed to get some value in. And Serral's unit composition right now, I mean, it's good. But look at the work, or look at the, the uh, supply counts right now, right? It's basically a maxed out solar going up against only 136 supply here for several. Fourth base was killed. Like I said earlier, taking a fifth base, very difficult. Right now, I don't really see Serral taking a fourth base anymore either. And in the meantime, Solar has got one, two, three, four, five, six hatcheries himself. Now, those traits, still not efficient at all, right? As time goes by, this unit composition of Serral just gets more and more efficient. And once again, by the way, I, I keep missing a couple of those run bys, I apologize, but I'm just a one-man production team. Uh, 11 additional workers do go down. Oof. Now, the unit composition here of Serral does get more efficient as time goes by. It's just one of the, uh, one of the key giveaways here of this kind of unit composition. It's just amazing. He's also going to get more powerful because these upgrades for the Lurkers in particular, so both the Seismic Spines as well as the Adaptive Talents, it's the, uh, it's the Lurker Improvements. Ooh. It will give them more range and it will also allow them to burrow and unburrow quicker. The thing is though, Solar is ready for the next maxed out attack wave and he's got a bank too, look at that. He's got like 3,000 resources here in the bank uh, to throw away necessarily and then, or if he needs to and then, you know, he can reposition and reproduce this army as well. Serral, though, has recognized, okay, I'm never gonna get myself a fourth base up, 
He's gonna try and push down his ramp. Does manage to get a nice parasitic bomb, but excellent splits right there by Solar. Although he's gotta be careful. Don't really want to send it all too far back in. At the same time, the Ultralisks are moving forward. Solar desperately trying to see if he can get this army to back off for now. Cero has been mostly contained on three bases here, but he's gonna go for what seems to be an all-out assault. Once again, Lurker's Burrow right here in the center of the map. Hydra's back off, away from those Banelings. Ultras cannot be abducted. So that is one thing here to keep in mind. Brute Lords can, Ultras can not. Roaches and Hydras moving forward. Additional Lurkers are being added on. The bank that Solar had has been depleted. Looks like the fifth base over here will also start taking some damage. And the amount of damage that Lurkers do to ground units is just insane. The thing is, you can't really transition right now to air either if you are Solar. Because most of the time, you're better off just transitioning. Oh, actually, a couple of roaches made it to the bottom left as well. Most of the time, you're, you're better off transitioning to watch exactly what he's doing here. Ultralist. Oh, here come the Ultras, though. They're trying to see if they can get on top of those Lurkers. A lot of damage is being done, but most of the army of Serral still remains. And for the very first time right now, the supply count has been evened up. Brenda's off creep and Solar taps out of the game as Serral's unit composition is simply superior to that of the Zerg player from South Korea. How sick was that? Honestly, if you're a Zerg player and like you play on the ladder regularly, you will recognize how incredibly difficult this victory right here for Cero is. The thing is, if you make one misstep and a couple of Banelings connect into your clump of Hydralisks, it's game over. If you accidentally leave a couple of those Lurkers clumped up and the opponent manages to like get the Banelings on top of them, it's game over. If you, you know, lose your fourth base earlier, and you can't get the sufficient amount of gas to go up towards the hive and get those upgrades. Like, the gas is really a limiting factor. It is game over. I, I think this game is a perfect example of the difference between European Zerk vs. Zerk and Korean ZVZ. So, the Europeans have been making fun of the Koreans for a very long time that they have bad ZVZ. Now, obviously, you gotta take that with a grain of salt. Because Dark, I mean, he's the current world champion. He's from South Korea. He beat Serral. He beat Raynor at BlizzCon to become the world champion. So there's no denying that, uh, you know, obviously they are very, very confident in the matchup. But still, the approach, this super, like, defensive style that Serral was playing compared to, like, the super active, I'm gonna out-multitask you kind of approach that Solar went for, it's really cool to see. And it certainly does show you uh, the dynamics that are possible and are viable in Zerk versus Zerk. I mean, I remember when all of the ZVZs ended with the Ling Bane phase, and then they all went to the Roach Ravager phase after that, right? But nowadays, there are a lot of potential strategies that are viable. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section of this video on this game. I hope you enjoyed watching this. If you did, hit that like button. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Don't forget to smile. And I'll see you once again in the next one.